you have to be steered towards engineering as you're coming up. I got lucky and got steered towards engineering. And I learned early on in my college career why it is that manufacturing left the United States. And so that coupled with my engineering acumen steered me towards automation. I decided a long, long time ago, I want my life to be about bringing good paying middle-class jobs back to the US. I'm gonna do that as an automation engineer. And I know that's counterintuitive, but trust me, automation creates way more jobs than it, it eliminates. What do I study to be an IoT integrator? So this was asked by Taylor Beamer, and this was in the, I think this was in the oil and gas IoT example. He said, this is exactly what I wanna learn from. For someone with an instrumentation and controls background, what's the best way to learn the networking and control skills required to be part of the IoT market? All right. So this is kind of a long answer, I'm gonna, but I think it's important. A lot, I get this question a lot. What should I study? You know, how, I'm, hey, I'm a, I'm a grad student and I, I wanna get into automation and IIoT, what do I do? So let me start with this. Systems integrators, IIoT engineers, automation engineers, controls engineers, they are born, they are not educated, okay? That is, but what I mean is, it doesn't mean they don't have educations. What I mean is you don't create an automation engineer. You don't create an integrator. Those people are born. They are born thinking a certain way. The one thing that we all have in common, all the best engineers in the world that I've ever met in my life, they don't all have degrees in mechanical engineering or industrial engineering or electrical engineering. In fact, the absolute best engineer I ever met in my entire life has a degree in English. But he, he didn't get steered to engineering while he was in high school. He got a degree in the wrong discipline. But because he was born an engineer, he, got, he steered toward engineering later on in his career. Okay. You, we are, the only thing that we all have in common is that we all want to know how everything works. We all tore apart our toys on Christmas morning. We wanted to know how they actually functioned. It was never good enough to, uh, to us for us to just take on face value that I push this and this happens. Engineers are people who are born wanting to know what happens between this action and this reaction. Okay. So that's number one. You have to think a certain way to be good at this. You may not want to hear that. There are probably people on this call who don't want to hear that. Um, but I assure you the most successful uh, engineers, especially in the IOT space, their brains were wired a certain way when they were born, okay? And, and you can't teach it. You can't teach that wiring. That being said, it's just like being able to jump 42 inches, having a 42 inch vertical leap. You're either born with the, 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 the fast twitch muscle fibers to be able to do that, or you, you're not. I mean, I can't train anyone to jump 42 inches into the air from a dead stand. You can't do that, right? Okay. so. That's the first piece. The first piece is you got to be born this way. The second piece is you have to be steered towards engineering as you're coming up. Okay. Um, I got lucky and got steered towards engineering. And I learned early on in my college career the why it is that manufacturing left the United States. And so that coupled with uh, my engineering acumen steered me towards automation. I decided a long, long time ago. I want my life to be about bringing good paying middle-class jobs back to the US. I'm gonna do that as an automation engineer. And I know that's counterintuitive, but trust me, automation creates way more jobs than it, than it, it eliminates. Creates way more jobs than it eliminates. Um, and so I started out by saying, I'm gonna become the best systems integrator on the planet. And I started that by getting a job in a salt mine. And I spent five years becoming a mechanic and a master journeyman electrician and an instrumentation and controls tech. So uh, six years, really. I, and I mastered that art. Then I said, okay, I need to learn all the processes. So how did I get exposure to PLC and DCS? I worked at different companies. So you got to do this too. If you want to get exposure to DCS, you got to work at a company that uses DCS. And when you're in the job interview, you got to ask, do you guys use distributed control systems? Oh, you don't? I'm not going to come work here <laughs> um, because I want to get that. I want to get that experience. So I left the mining industry. I had a great paying job working in mining, but great pay was not my focus. So then what I did was I moved to printing. So I went to a high speed, dirty process that used Profibot. The reason I picked printing was because they used DCS 
and they used high speed field bus, which I didn't have any exposure on in mining. Okay. In mining, it was all data highway plus Rockwell ethernet. It was all super slow. I spent a couple of years there. And once I had learned everything I needed to learn, I switched, I moved to the steel industry and in the steel industry, I got exposed to another type of DCS system. Plus I got to do a bunch of TI conversion. TI, one of the reasons I took that job was I was going to have an opportunity to do two major stacker conversions where I was going to be able to convert TI PLCs into control logics automation. And it was all going to be done in-house with the Wonderware SCADA sitting on top of it. So that's part of the reason I took that job. But I also took it so I could do the DCS, the ABB DCS in steel. My last step was as an engineer for uh, in the automotive industry for a tier one automotive supplier. The reason I took that job, which came with a huge pay cut, I, my pay cut, my pay got cut in half because I went to automotive from steel. I worked for Newcore Steel, which I was making six huge six figure numbers. I my sit my salary got cut in half to go work for this automotive supplier. But the reason I took that job was because they were also an OEM. They built their own manufacturing equipment in house. And I wanted the experience of being a product engineer, developing the actual equipment. Once I was done with that, it took about 12, 13 years of my career to do that. I switched to integration and I went and worked for two of the best integrators on the planet. During that process is when I started studying machine learning and artificial intelligence. So I started studying machine learning and AI at every step of the way when I was in manufacturing, I would build things that no one asked me to build. So I would say, you know what this plant needs? It needs a plant level SCADA system. And I know they're not gonna give me the money for it. So I'm gonna go up and call my Wonderware rep and I'm gonna convince this guy to give me a free license. And I'm gonna build this awesome thing and I'm gonna sell it to management and then they're gonna pay for it. And that's exactly what I did. And I did it over and over and over again to the point where that Wonderware rep <laughs> who is in based in Horsham, Pennsylvania, that guy, I'm here in Dallas and we, we still work together to this day, 20 years later. So when I went to the integrators, I worked for two top notch integrators. The first thing that I learned was what is it they do? How do they do this? And then I asked the question, how would I do it? Like what, what jumps off the page at me as wrong about this approach? And then I create, went and created my own company. So to answer your question, What's the best way of learning network and controlling skills? You're not gonna learn it in a classroom. The one thing every engineer is going to, I mean, that doesn't mean don't go to class. You need to take these classes. Go to Udemy and you know, go get your Cisco certification. Go learn everything you can about MySQL and SQL Server. What I would recommend to you is join our mentorship program and we'll train you. We'll give you all the skills you need to be successful. Now, you better, everyone who joins our mentorship program better have been born with the thinking the way we think, or you're going to be frustrated. Okay. Um, they, but in, in the IIoT market, there isn't, there isn't, a, there is no one out here teaching this stuff. They're all using the words, but they all happen to not even know what the words mean.